And then I met my first husband, and it was after he was in the Air Force and was killed overseas that I heard about the program that Jackie Cochran had for training women to be military pilots. And when I saw that article, I thought, as long as my first husband was killed, I would like to be in his place in the Air Force and fly airplanes. It took a lot for me to get here. I had to borrow money just to buy my train ticket. Mm. My mother wasn't happy with my flying, yet alone me being here. Hey, there's no airplane we can't handle, right? That's an AT-6 with 600 horsepower. That's so much more than the 90 I'm used to. It's so fast. Come on, let's show them how it's done. Come on, Natalie. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Against this backdrop of anger towards foreign influence in China, the boxers took matters into their own hands in an explosive, violent way. Sometimes they retreated into their churches and the boxers would burn the churches with the missionaries in there. There were many accounts of missionaries being killed by the boxers, so it really was a very serious situation if you were a Christian missionary in China at that time. The group would then travel upstream on a river steamer to a houseboat, where they would live for two months on the Yangtze River. In coming up river on our houseboat, the trackers who pull the boat have many dangerously steep and slippery paths to climb. The trackers climbed like goats all over these rocky paths and while pulling your boat at the same time. If the rope catches on rocks, not infrequently a man or two is jerked off and falls down the cliff. I have been so very fortunate in the space program. I got to go to orbit aboard the space shuttles five different times. Launch in a space shuttle is pretty exciting because you've got seven and a half million pounds of thrust pushing your four and a half million pound vehicle up into space. So it only takes eight and a half minutes to go from sitting still on the launch pad to 17,500 miles an hour. That's pretty exciting. We have solid rocket booster ignition and liftoff of the channel. have a picture of the of the Saturn V that first stage has five F1s on it the F1 it's the largest rocket engine ever built but the F1 at a million and a half pounds see five of them seven and a half million pounds is what we needed to get that whole big Saturn V with the command and service module the astronauts the lunar module they're all that that mass uh, payload uh, those five F-1 engines took it up there. Armstrong descended the Eagle's ladder to take his first steps on the moon. An anxious world watched the moment live. We went down to Fort Lauderdale. It was, you know, just 100 miles south or 140 miles south. And that night, or the night of the walk on the moon with Neil Armstrong, I went and got my kids up. 
And, um... Now go step off the limb. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. It was so compelling that they needed to understand what humans can do when they're pulled together. And uh, I was well up. It was the Wright Cycle Company that financed Orville and Wilbur's aviation experiments. The late Victorian building on South William Street is the only Wright Cycle Company building still standing in its original location. The building was used by the Wrights for only two years, selling and modifying bicycles for customers. This is just the beginning of our exploration of Dayton Aviation Sites. As we venture further, we will find plenty more locations to discover. At first glance, Huffman Prairie may look like any other Ohio meadow. However, this location was central to the development of today's aviation. After months of preparation, the start of the race is finally here. Teams pack up their minimal belongings, go through their pre-flight rituals, and recheck their checklist before engines start up. have to just sit there and wait for them to start you in sets of five. So you get the start sign and you just want to start. As soon as you see that other team start, and then you're on the runway and you're ready to take off. Classic Racer 12, the wind is 170 at 13. Runway 1 on right, clear for takeoff. Full length right turn out approved. 19 on right, clear for takeoff, right turn approved, Classic Racer 12 and you get the clearance, and then it's full throttle, and then that excitement just starts to build. Okay, you guys ready? Everything's on. The WASP provided a crucial service for their country, but it took decades to recognize their contribution. Only this year did Congress officially permit WASP burial in Arlington National Cemetery. From congressional awards to receiving official veteran status, the WASP are finally being honored for their contribution. The Commemorative Air Force, the world's largest flying museum, has recently uncovered the special past of an AT-6 training aircraft. This World War II veteran is one of the airplanes that was used to train the WASP at Sweetwater, Texas. I got two bronze stars and for doing something I was supposed to be doing in the first place. Well, I was a communications sergeant for the company and I was out putting telephone lines to places where they need them in order so they could contact each other and so forth. But that's what I was supposed to be doing. They said, you know, it was under artillery fire, you know, where, where I live and stuff. And I didn't think too much about it at the time. You know, that's what I'm supposed to be doing anyway. But somebody thought I ought to have a run star for it. The wild Oklahoma winds are within safety limits, and the jumpers gather. Colonel Steely leads the team with the customary pre jump blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for the opportunity to come before thee this day and together as paratroopers will once again serve thee and remember and honor in serving those who came before us. We ask thee for thy blessings to be upon us, to give us a safe flight, a safe trip to the ground, and a return back to this area so that we can do it again. And I 
and all good paratroopers in. members of a historical organization that commemorate by doing demonstration jumps. Whenever you're at 1,500 feet and you're standing in the door of that aircraft looking down at the ground, whenever that left foot goes out the door, you have just stopped being a reenactor. What causes these men and women to give so much? To dedicate so much of their lives to aircraft and times gone by? The apparent answer, love. Love of aviation, of antique airplanes and the history they represent. It is that love that moves these volunteers to bring life to the past and give history a future. <laughs>